Okay, so I know you are all dazed by the apple. But let us move on to the next for more spectacular musical numbers and stunts. Uh, we have, uh, to introduce the film tonight, the director of Stunt Rock. His name is Brian Trenchard Smith, and please welcome him to the stage. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, <laughs> every filmmaker gets a wild ass idea. <laughs> and normally there's a system of development and executive bureaucracy to prevent such things ever actually reaching production all on the screen. In this instance, the system failed. <laughs> want a little bit more of that. Uh, we, so, one morning in 77, late 77, I was having a shower and it suddenly came to me. Uh, you know, famous stuntman meets famous rock group. Much stunt and much rock takes place. The kids yeah! will tear out the seats. Yeah! And in QED. I mean, it's there. It's, it's just golden box office. I mean, how, how could it fail? Um, <laughs> So I immediately left the shower and sat down at my dining room table and uh, yeah. I think I partook of some herbal remedies. Uh, uh, it was the 70s after all. Uh, and uh, my pen immediately took life uh, and very soon I had a six page treatment. And I thought, well, this is great because this is my professional love letter to a stuntman who I, you know, made a lot of films with stuntmen and about stuntmen. And, you know, they're the guys that make the stars look good sometimes. And, you know, they, they deserve that special credit, but they, they have until recently, you know, been kind of kept invisible. Um, but uh, anyway, so I thought, okay. Um, you know, there is a synergy between rock and roll, particularly acts like Kiss that were beginning to be, be seen in, in the late 70s, uh, and stunts, so let's put something together. And I, in addition to the films I've made, I've, I've made 37 films you've never heard of, and this is one of them. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, in, in between films, I've made trailers for other people's movies, and I've made about 120 trailers for theatrically released films over the years. And uh, it just occurred to me that, you know, wouldn't it be fun if you could make a trailer that was 90 minutes long? <laughs> so this was the, the basic concept. Um, and uh, luckily, um, I had met a Dutch film executive who'd bought my previous film, Death Cheaters, <laughs> which also starred Grant Page. Uh, and uh, he said, if you ever have any bright ideas, uh, let me know. So I quickly mailed, express mail, this to, 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 uh, you know, to Amsterdam and got a phone call back saying, come to Amsterdam and we'll do a deal. So I came to Amsterdam thinking that I was going to be making a film in Australia. Um, and he said, right, um, we want you to make this film. And Monique van der Ven, the Verhoeven actress of uh, considerable note, she's got to be in it. Uh, and you're going to make it in Los Angeles and you're going to do it for $450,000 for the movie and $150,000 for the, mu the music. Uh, and uh, we want it ready uh, in stereo. Uh, I'm afraid, sorry, tonight it's in mono, uh, but it'll be loud. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we want it ready by June the 30th. This is December. I have a six page treatment. So, um, yeah, well, I did ask for it, so I got it. Uh, and then I set about trying to make it. So I came here, and of course, we couldn't afford a SAG cast. Um, so I, I, I forced my poor wife into the film, for which she has taken 30 years to forgive me. Um, and and uh, anyway, and Monique was very good, and I looked around for other cast, and I went to the Groundlings, because I, I, I love improv comics, uh, and I thought, yeah, inside every improv comic there's a great tragedian, uh, and, and maybe you know, a good actor too. And if the eagle-eyed here will spot Phil Hartman in his very first screen role, unfortunately far too short, as, as, you know, as with his life. Uh, but it was great, at least Phil Hartman was, is, is you know, immortalized in some way at very early in his career before he became famous. Uh, so, you know, we shot the film in a hair-raising 15 days, and in another hair-raising three weeks, five editors and I worked on it to get it ready for the mix. 
two weeks after shooting. Uh, and this is the result. And, you know, I'm, yeah, it, 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 uh, it has its moments. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and if you're interested in staying afterwards, I will you know, tell you, uh, I'll answer any questions uh, for those who don't have to get up in the morning. Um, so I will hand the mic over now, and you're about to see some trailers, uh, one of which is for one of my later films, uh, one that was made about eight years later, Dead End Driver, uh, which, you know, I recommend. Oh, there's some Dead End is here. Oh, good, good. Uh, some people have, have seen some, some of my stuff. I have a particular sensibility. It, it takes a bit of doing to get used to it. But anyway, here it is. Thank you for coming.